In Creole Parametric, you can use a pairs clearance analysis to measure the separation between two components in an assembly. If that assembly is a mechanism, you can use a motion analysis to track that separation throughout the mechanism analysis. And if you end up having interference, you can use a feasibility study in order to eliminate that interference. Let's take a look at how to do that. And I'm gonna warn you, I'm gonna get down a rabbit hole in this video where I came into some trouble and how I got myself out. So here I have a mechanism. Let's go to mechanism mode to see how it runs. I'll go to applications, then mechanism. Let me bring back my navigator so I can get to the analyses. There's one already defined in this model. However, it's a position analysis. This is a really old assembly. That was the old default one for mechanism design extension. Let me change to the kinematic analysis. I'm gonna increase the frame rate so that we don't have a weird interval. Now I will click the run button and you can see how it moves. You can probably tell that we are getting interference in the model, but I wanted to orient you to the motion that we have in this assembly. Let's close out of our mechanism mode and it gives me a warning about not saving the file. That's okay, I'm just not, just not gonna save it. So first off, I want to track the distance between two components in the assembly. One is going to be the car part and also the ground. And to make it easier to see, I'm gonna select a flat surface and view normal to that surface. Let's go to the analysis tab. If you go to the drop down underneath global interference, you will find the pairs clearance tool. And you can choose what you're measuring from and what you're measuring to. And there are a variety of different objects that you can select. I'm gonna use my selection filter to limit my selection to parts, but be aware that you could use geometry and you can also use piping objects and cabling objects. Let's choose part. And I'm gonna choose this particular part for the car and for the second component. Let me make sure I get grab the part that represents the floor. Let's pan over a little bit. You can see right now we have a clearance of, of about 124. Rather than just clicking the OK button, I'm going to create this as a feature in my model. I'll go to the drop down list and choose feature. Here's where we can change the name. I'm happy with that as the name. If I go to the feature tab, let me make this a little bit wider so that I can resize the columns. There are three different parameters that you can create. Only one is checked by default, the minimum clearance. And you could also create two datums for the points on the various different entities. But I am happy with just that parameter being created. I will click the OK button. And now the clearance feature is at the bottom of my model tree. If I want to see that separation distance throughout the motion, I'm going to create a datum analysis feature. If we go to the upper left-hand corner on the analysis tab, here is the command for creating a datum analysis feature. And right now we can choose the name of it. The default is analysis one. I'm gonna call this separation. And for the type, there are eight different choices available. I'm going to use the radio button for motion analysis. Oops, it wiped out my name. Let me type that again. And for the regeneration request, I'll leave it as always, but later on I might want to change it to read only or maybe only design study. Now I will click the next button and this opens up the motion analysis dialog box. Here is where we have the clearance parameter that I just created. For the mechanism analysis, if I had more than one, I could select it from this drop-down list. I'm going to use all moving parts. There is the option to perform a collision detection. I don't need to do that, but if you want to, you'll get two other additional parameters generated, one for collisions detected and a collided parts list. There is a button for changing your collision detection settings. I might want to do just a partial collision detection between those two components. Let me use the control key to select them. And for the options, 
I might just want to highlight the interfering volumes. I don't want to stop on collision or attempt to push the objects upon collision. I definitely don't want to sound the warning upon collision. That can be very annoying. Let's click the OK button and everything in here looks good. I will click the Run button and the motion is proceeding. And it is finished. I am going to do that once more. I'm going to select the clearance parameter this time so that I can see it during the run. You can see how it's tracking the motion and it bottoms out at zero when the components collide and now it climbs back up again. So this is good. I am going to close the chart tool and then click the close button out of the motion analysis dialog box. Then inside of here, we can choose what parameters are going to be created in this analysis feature. By default, it is going to create one for the motion runtime. I don't care about the motion runtime, so I'm going to change that to no. But this is the one that I am interested in, the minimum clearance. It is not creating a parameter for that by default. I'm going to set that to yes. And there's some other additional parameters like max clearance and the time that those clearances happen. But I don't care about those. I just want to know that minimum clearance value. I will click on the check mark. And now the separation feature is created at the bottom of my model tree. Then I wanted to have my model change so that the separation minimum value is a certain amount. So I thought, hey, let's create a feasibility optimization study. I'll go to the command and click on it. It opens up the dialog box. With an optimization study, you can choose to minimize or maximize some other quantity in your model, but I don't need to do that. I don't want to do that in this particular situation. I just want to drive that separation to a particular value. So I'm going to change to feasibility. And for the name of the study, I'm going to call this min sep. And maybe I decide that I want it to be a value of 10 inches. And so for my design constraints, I will click on the add button. And from the drop down list, I have my two different choices from the datum analysis features I created, one for that clearance value, and then for the minimum clearance value that was calculated in the motion analysis. That's the one that I want. And I want it to set it to a value of, let's say 10 inches. Maybe that's my requirement, the minimum separation between the amusement park ride and the ground. So I will click the OK button. It adds it to the list. You can have multiple design constraints, but I only want the one. So I'm going to click the cancel button so that it is the only one listed in here. For my design variables, let me add a dimension from the model. I will click on the base part, which drives the height. And it's this particular dimension which is called D12 in the part called base. And it's giving me some default initial values, which are plus and minus 10% of the dimensions initial value. I already know that 80 is too low, so I can set 80 as the minimum value. And then for the maximum value, maybe I want to open up the value a little bit. Now, spoiler alert, this is not going to work. For some reason, this is going to fail. And I tried a whole bunch of different things. So for example, I went into the, oops, let me hit the enter button and okay. So in trying to close the little dialog box for selecting dimensions, I accidentally ran the analysis. Let me grab the bottom of the message area and make it wider. You can see that it started optimizing went through two steps and then gave up. It said no feasible solution has been found. So at this point, I was like, what the heck is going on? I went to the options and preferences. And in this dialog box, I thought, hey, let me graph the constraints and the variables. Hopefully that will help me. I tried increasing the convergence percentage. I opened it up way up to 10%, but I'm just going to change it to 2% for now. And I tried increasing the maximum iterations, but that doesn't matter because it only went two steps. I even tried changing from gradient projection to the MDS algorithm. 
Nothing worked and I could not figure it out. So I went to the PTC knowledge base and it reminded me of something that I used to teach when I delivered the BMX classes 15 years ago. If you are not getting a converged solution, there's a chance that you might be stuck on a local minimum or a local maximum. So it's always a good idea to use a sensitivity analysis in order to figure out a good starting point. So let's close out of the optimization feasibility dialog box. I'll go to the sensitivity analysis. And I wanna figure out how sensitive is that dimension to impacting the value of the minimum clearance. So for my dimension, let me use the pick icon in order to select that height dimension once more. And I'll use the same ranges as before. Let's start with a value of 80 and go to a maximum of 120. For the number of steps, well, I'm gonna increase that to 41. The reason I'm using 41 is so that I get it calculated at every whole number between that range. And for the parameters to plot, I will select that minimum clearance created from the separation feature. And everything in here looks good. So now let's see what we can learn from the sensitivity analysis. Okay, the sensitivity analysis is complete. Let me grab the graph and make it a little bit wider so that we can gain some information from here. So yeah, 80 turned out to be a really bad local minimum for this particular analysis. It didn't become positive until around 94, 95 or so. I'm interested in a value around 10 and just to make this easier to read or easier to analyze, I am going to adjust the plot. If I click on this icon, it'll open up the same controls that you have for the chart component in MathCAD. So let me change my Y axis and I'll go to the setup and use a user defined range. I'm really only interested in a minimum, minimum value of five and let's go to a maximum value of 15 with 10 steps in between there. And for the X axis, let's customize that. Let's start at around a value of 95 and probably go to about, I don't know, 110. Let's go to, let's see the setup, user defined range, what did I say, 95 and then 110. And we can do three steps in between there. Okay, so now I can figure out a good starting value. So in order to have that minimum clearance of about 10, looks like it should be a little bit below 105. Maybe I'll start off at a value of like 103 or 104. I like to be a little bit off the value so that it can get closer to the target that I've set up as one of my design constraints. So that is good information that I have gleaned from the sensitivity analysis. Let's close out of here and I will close out of sensitivity. Let's go back to our feasibility optimization and for the minimum value, I don't know what I say, 103, 104, something like that. And let's change the maximum value to 110 and hit the enter key and everything else looks good. Let me double check my preferences. I do want to graph them so you can see them. 2% is good. I know that's not gonna go to 50 iterations and I'm not going to animate the model. Let's click the okay button and then I will choose compute and let's see what we get. All right, a feasible solution has been found. Looks like it started at the initial value that I gave it and then did one iteration and then another iteration to confirm. It jumped up to a value. Looks like it's about 10.02 for the minimum clearance. And that's well within 2% of the target goal that I specified. Let me move this chart over. The one behind it shows the dimensional value that it ended up using. So again, we started out at an initial value of 104, then it jumped to just under 104.9. So that is the dimension that 
is going to end up being. Let me close this and then close the other graph. I can build this as a feature in my model by using this button to create the optimization feature. Once again, let me change the name to MinSep10 and I will hit the check mark. Oops, and here we can add the name in there, MinSep10. And if I scroll down in my, oh, let me close out of the optimization feasibility dialog box. There we have the feature created in the model. Let me go to that base feature and then show the dimensions. We can see that it has a value of 104.894. So there you have it. That's how you can use a pairs clearance in conjunction with a motion analysis and a sensitivity study to get to a feasibility study.